Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time. And this week's topic, guys, is an important one because it's going to help you navigate pretty much all markets, right? Sometimes we go into a market and we have a certain bias, right? Long bias, short bias, etc. And then all of a sudden, the stocks that we're looking on the short side, they go higher. The stocks we're looking on the long side, they go lower. Well, how do we know when it's okay to take a stock that was a short idea and go along with it and vice versa. So that's what I'm going to talk about today because I'm getting some emails from folks saying, Jared, why did you go long on that trade? It was on your short list. Why did you go short on that trade? It was on your long list. And I agree. There, are, It's not a common thing that I do, maybe 10% of the time, 15% of the time, but it's something, it's a tool that you should have in your toolbox because it'll help you navigate all market environments, right? Not every market is easy to trade and sometimes we're wrong about our bias and we have to accept that and be objective about it. So today we're going to talk about that and we're also going to talk about just how important the 60 minute chart is. Many of you out there are just not paying enough attention to the 60 minute time frame, especially for you intraday traders. All right. So if you like these videos, please click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is when to reverse a trade. This is a topic I haven't discussed in a while. Um, and I thought, you know what? After seeing certain trades um, over the past couple of weeks, as well as a, uh, not a huge influx, only about five or 10 emails. It wasn't crazy amount of emails, but people questioning why I took certain trades or, hey, if that was on your short list, why did you go long on it? That kind of stuff. And uh, I wish I had a little bit more time to put this together because I have quite a few more charts that I would like to have added. Having said that, there's about 20 charts in here, so there's quite a few. Um, and we're going to talk about when it's okay to reverse a trade. You know, When are you allowed to say, you know what? I know my bias was short, but I'm going to go long. I know my bias was long, but I'm going to go short. When is that okay to do? Um, so that's today's topic. But before we get into today's topic, let's first talk about when will the insanity stop? Um, these are these are not easy, guys. I mean, I know, you know, we we joke and we have a good time and all this stuff and some of these are hard like i'm married so i have a wife i mean how do i tell my wife our life savings are gone i threw in almost 90 percent of our joint savings account into doge at 0.40 or 40 cents expecting it to hit a dollar i didn't realize that it was at 50 billion blah 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 market cap blah blah blah, blah. i'm sick to my stomach right now well you should be because any time in life that you go all in on something, you better be damn well certain, not sure, I mean certain, that you're right. Because I can't think of very many, if any, situations or circumstances where it's ever okay to go all in on something. And 90% is pretty close to all in, right? That's pretty close. Why? In my mind, the only reason a person would go all in on anything is one, they are certain, or two, this is more likely the case, two, they want to get rich quick. They're YOLO in it. They're diamond hands in it. They want to get rich quick. To me, I, I, I just can't imagine why you would ever do that, right? Why you would ever do that. Separate accounts, yeah, that's um, that's true love right there. <laughs> anyway, um, these are sad, guys. That's all I can say to this. It's sad, right? It's just sad. So to you out there listening, watching, never go all in on anything. It's the same reason we have an entry, a stop loss, and a target on our trades. It's the same reason we never, ever risk more than 1% of our capital, our cash account, on a trade and that's for an experienced trader not a new trader a new trader risks five bucks because you can't be trusted right this is just unacceptable behavior and the problem is so many people do it i did a bitcoin video last year and all i heard was 
I'm all in. You don't know jack shit about Bitcoin, Jared. Well, Bitcoin's at 38,600 when I did that video. Just hit 20,000 yesterday. All right. So let's dig in and talk about today's topic. So not every day, not every day is like this. I put this in here as a reminder that yes, great smooth trades happen, right? This was a nice gap down under a bottoming tail in an area of support with room to drop, gave you a five minute three bar play, wide bar, narrow bar, and it pretty much worked very quickly. It was a $3 stop loss and that's giving it room. So you needed a $6 move, 174, my goodness, in less than 15 minutes, and you never really were challenged on this trade. So yes, these things do happen, but this is not every day, right? You all know there are plenty of trades you take that don't work immediately, or maybe you have to really scan a lot or work hard to find those. And some days something like this shows up and you're like, okay, check, check, good. All right. So today's point is to say, well, what happens when things like this don't happen? Then what do we do? And it's funny because I did this last night late. And now today we have a sit on hands type trading day where the market's doing almost nothing today. Okay. So one of the reasons that I'm doing this lecture is because I do get some of these comments from time to time. You know, this was yesterday for me. Okay. Faves, Cown, Crocs, BNTX, JP Morgan. And I always find it fascinating. People always pick on like the one trade you're wrong on because I think Cown and Crocs did pretty well yesterday. But anyway, BNTX plus 10 bucks far away from your post above, right? I had BNTX on my favorites list under 149. Right. And what happened yesterday? BNTX ripped. OK, why a small gap down stock should be traded on the long side? Is it due to relative strength? OK. And then, of course, you know, the sarcasm over here. Well, one, first and foremost, these people have no idea how we trade or what we do. Right. They're just a bunch of pathetic Internet gurus that really don't know anything, but they like to troll people, I suppose. Um, the point, though, is that a favorites list is a suggestion list, right? It's not a, we're going to trade count over 28. You guys know that because you're in the chat room. But sometimes the general public thinks that's a recommendation and it's not. That's just an area of interest. Isn't those the words we use every day? Areas of interest. But the question then is, <clears throat> why would I do something like that? If this is not just on my gap list, but on a favorites list, why would you ever think about going long on something that's a, one of your favorite short ideas? Well, things change. Information changes, right? And you take a look right here. But, 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 BNTX was on your short list. And then you look at the damn thing and you're like, wow. One, it never got close to 149, so who cares, right? But anyway, 151, I think, rips up to like 163, you know, so to the layman, they're sitting there going, well, who is this idiot? He must not know anything about what he's talking about, right? And that's okay, okay? Um, the point, though, is if you married your bias, which was bearish initially, you're not going to do very much. You're not going to do very well, I should say. Meaning, if you're constantly looking to short, 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 short BNTX, but the chart is telling you long, 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 you're going to have a problem, right? You're going to have a problem. But I think we can agree that the short bias is, is acceptable here. I mean, this line, see BNTX opened here. The tip of this arrow is where BNTX opened. It took out 50% of a pretty good size green bar, right? So this stock was up three days in a row, is near some resistance to the left. And you wake up the next day and it's gapping down, you know, four or five dollars, maybe more. I don't remember exactly what we can find out. It was at like, it closed the previous day at 157 and it opened to like 151. It's gapping out like six bucks deep into a green bar with some void to below. So to have it on your list is okay. To keep it on your short list and stay bearish all day is not. And I'm, I'm trying to say this in a nice way. If you're a new trader, then maybe do that, right? Say, all right, because it popped, I'm done with it, right? It's gone to me. It's dead to me now because my bias was bearish and therefore it moved in the wrong direction, push it aside and let it go. That's fine. But if you want to get to the next level of trading, you're going to figure out 
how you're going to need to figure out that there are times when some of these become very good counter trend plays. So how do you sort that out? How do you figure that out? Well, one of the reasons I brought this up is because like BNTX and VAX, although was not on my short list, it's the same idea. And we ended up making money on NVAX yesterday, right? So the point was, is if I looked at that sector and I looked at BNTX and I looked at NVAX and you're like, well, no, BNTX is a good gap down. That means NVAX has to be a short idea. Well, no, we, we flipped it and went long on it and made money on it. And otherwise, yesterday may have been a more challenging day, perhaps, okay? So we're going to dig into this a little bit deeper. All right. This is the easier route to take, right? The easier route to take was Crocs yesterday. Okay, I'm not denying this. I'm just saying, and the reason I'm saying this is you don't have to do this, right? You don't have to find a way to go long on something that looked short. You don't have to find a way to go short on something that looked long. It's, it's more of a higher level concept. So if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. I'm not forcing you to do it. I'm just saying, hey, it's possible, but this is the easier way to make money, right? Crocs gapped up in a market that gapped down. Well, that's the easier way to make money. And this thing ripped. I mean, really, really ripped yesterday. And you, we talked about this. Um, I think it was somewhere on 49.50 on a buy setup. Remember, there was like a two minute buy setup with a 50 cent stop and it went like 7R, maybe even more than that. Okay, so if you're not comfortable about what we're going to talk about, that's okay. Focus on just the Crocs type trades. Focus on just this Xilinx type trade. That's fine. Stay in your lane if you're not ready. Get me? Because I'd rather see you make money doing it your way than try to expand your horizon when you're not ready yet and then maybe lose money. All right. I do think it's good to expand your toolbox, though, because the market is ever changing. We talked about that. All right. So. What are we going to be looking at? When to reverse a trade? In my opinion, there are four times or four scenarios in which it's okay for you to reverse a trade. Climactic parabolics, that's the obvious one, right? When you think about professional trading strategies, that's the first thing you think of as a counter trend play. Oh, par parabolics, climactics, okay? The next one on the list is mega gaps, right? And you can glean from professional trading strategies as well that mega gaps are a tough, type of gap to go in the direction of the gap. Hence, we refer to mega gaps as novice gaps, right? They're not pro gaps, they're novice gaps because we're expecting them to change direction. We're not expecting them to continue in the same direction as the gap because the gap's too big, right? So climactics, mega gaps, large turnaround bars. Well, you'll see one, right? So I understand a turnaround bar by definition has to be a wide range bar, two times the size of an average bar. We know this, but sometimes you get extreme turnaround bars, right? Really large turnaround bars, okay? Those are kind of the ones I'm thinking of, right? And then, of course, unusual relative strength or weakness, meaning exceptional, exceptional relative strength or relative weakness. When you look at something and go, oh my gosh, the market's down 2% and this stock's up 5 or 10 and it's not stopping. That's unusual relative strength, okay? Now, this can be hard to discern early in the day, but those are the four scenarios in which I would be comfortable reversing a trade, okay? Now, there's a couple more double, triple bottom retests with higher highs and higher lows, but in the sense, that stock is transitioning on that time frame. Does that make sense? So it's hard to say that that's a, it's a reversal, but it's a, it's a cycle reversal, right? Where you're in stage one, two, three, four, but you're doing it on a micro time frame. But the key here, guys, is to understand that these are the exceptions. These are not the rules. The vast majority, I use 75%, but I think it's way higher than that. 75% of stocks move with the market. Again, it's probably closer to 80 or 90% of stocks move with the market. I mean that, okay? So when you have 80 to 90% of stocks moving with the market, these four categories become more challenging to find. And you gotta make sure when you see one that you're really seeing what you think you're seeing, okay? So as a general rule, don't buck the trend, right? The trend is your friend, you guys have heard that. A rising tide lifts all boats, etc. All right, so these are the four scenarios in which I believe it's acceptable for you to go the other direction, all right? So let's take a look at some of those. This is what I consider an extreme turnaround bar. I mean, this is a $25 bar, something like that. This is a stock. But I want that gap down pretty big and then sold off. What I want you to note here, though, this isn't just a turnaround bar. What else is this? 
I know the answer most of you are going to give, but that's not probably the answer I'm looking for. Other than a turnaround bar, what also is this? Anyone? Other than an exceptionally large turnaround bar, what else is this chart? Those are the answers I was expecting you to give. Super three bar plays. That's the answer I was expecting everyone to give. Okay. But that's not why we're taking this trade. Sure. That helps us get a tighter stop loss. Right. All of those things are wonderful. You're right. They confirm the strength of the stock. Okay. It was, I'll give you a hint. There it is. Stefan got it. It's a wide range ending gap. It's a novice gap. So if we go back one slide, we don't just have one, right? We don't have one of these four things on here. We have two of these four things on here, right? We have a large turnaround bar that I was speaking of, okay? And we also have a mega gap, right? So we have a large turnaround bar as well as a mega gap. So we're getting two of the four reversal type patterns that we're looking at. Okay, so to me, that's a big deal. All right, that's a very big deal. So go back to that. All right, now you have a stock that gap from like 412 and it opens at like 367. And then what does it do? It doesn't just, it's already a pretty damn big gap, right? 412 to 367 is like a $40 move, $45 move, whatever it comes out to. So you're looking at something that's over 10% on a $400 stock. And not only is, is that a, a big mega gap, it sells off to the tune of like $20. In the first like five minutes, two, it looks like a two minute chart. In the first two minutes of the day, it sells off $20 and leaves a bottoming tail. This is finished, it's over, it's done. I mean, it's a mega gap to start and then it sells off another 5% in two minutes, leaves a bottoming tail and completely engulfs. The only question I have on this is where's my stop loss gonna be and that's it. Because everything else here is just a big old juice box. It's like one of those fruit punch Capri Suns. All right? So when you look at this, it just gets better and better and better. Mega Gap, already thinking long. Mega Gap plus a massive two-minute sell-off early in the day, really thinking long. Mega Gap plus a massive two-minute sell-off with a bottoming tail and an engulfing turnaround bar. Really, 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 really thinking. Oh, my goodness, there's two resting bars too? Shit. How much better does it get? It doesn't. It doesn't, right? And on top of all of that, you get a very reasonable stop loss because of the two resting bars. Normally, you'd have to put your stop loss down here at 355, giving you a $15 stop loss and, well, hurting your risk to reward significantly. These two resting bars allow you to have the $5 stop loss, hell, even tighter than that. And all of a sudden, you have a $5 stop loss and this thing moves up almost two R quickly, pulls back and then moves higher. This is getting multiple concepts together with a reversal, right? It's, it's really, really, really nice, okay? So now, here's the extreme one-sided move, right? We talk about climactics, parabolics. An extreme one-sided moves usually reverse. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five bars down. Stock drops from 16, 10, whatever it was, all the way to 10 freaking dollars. Hello. That's a pretty big drop. You know, that's a really, really big drop. And it did so relatively quickly. And these bars have massive volume. Just do yourself a favor and look at yesterday's volume, right? at 12 o'clock look at heck look at the end of the day when you normally expect big volume to come in at 3 30 4 o'clock it doesn't hold a candle to today's volume it's not huge volume it's insanely huge volume it's it's wicked huge right it's big crazy volume and then you get a green bar so this is the obvious one that everyone talks about so right now you're going well i'm not learning anything on this chart well yeah you're not because you're so used to parabolics being the one area you're allowed to reverse a trade but mega gaps novice gaps large turnaround bars are also there okay now this gets even better when we add the daily chart doesn't it right now that you've added the daily chart, you're looking like, oh my gosh, this day is this bottoming tail, 
right? This day is the bottoming tail. And you go, holy smokes. So not only is this thing down one, two, three, four, five bars, it's down five bars after a daily pullback of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days in a row. And the tenth day decides to puke out like nobody's business, right? Like a college kid at a frat party, just puke out, okay? Praying to the porcelain god. And you're sitting there going, once you get it all out, it's going to feel a lot better. And then you go long. But when you can match that higher with the lower, this becomes a very obvious, obvious trade. Okay, so try to use multiple time frames as always, but make sure you're really seeing what you think you're seeing. One of the issues with parabolics and climactics is people just take little pullbacks. Oh, it's down five percent. No, I want you to. I want you to feel bad for the people in here, which is rare because we don't ever feel bad for anyone else as long as we're taking their money. We don't care about anyone else. We're selfish like that. We're greedy. But this is one of those situations. Remember, like, what was it? LYT the other week? I can't remember what it was. When that stock dropped like 80, 90%, you almost feel bad for those people. Almost. Okay. Now, let's go back to yesterday. The Qs gapped down about 1.4% yesterday. The SPY was down a lot. Both indices, right? IWM was down, SPY was down, the Qs were down, right? They all gapped down yesterday. And when you see where they gapped to, they were near some support, right? Previous days low. So if I take this, let me take that and put the arrow right there. It's a little bit thick, but that, that arrow, okay? That is where the market opened yesterday. That's where the market opened, the tip of that arrow. Well, there's no reasonable belief that the market was going to do this. None. None whatsoever. You can say hindsight's 2020 and you're a Monday morning quarterback, and that's great. But in real time, with real information, we really didn't think this market was going to do this. Sure. We knew we were kind of in the middle of the previous day's range. We had a little bit of resistance above, a little bit of support below. So the morning opening that was choppy was to be expected, right? You take a look at the first two, four, six, eight bars of the day, first 40 minutes of the day, and it was choppy. But the first two to three bars of the day suggested lower prices, right? So to think the market would end at 287, it's out of the question in the first 15, 20 minutes of the day. Right? You may have thought it would go to 282, which was the prior day's close right there, and then pull back, which it did, and then it just ripped. What's the point? The point here is the same as the stock. We came into this day with a bearish bias, and that was fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But we had to change. We had to be more flexible because the chart was giving us a different picture of our than our expectation. Right? It's like you believe something, but somebody is showing you in front of you that this isn't true. Right? It's like instant replay. You think the guy is safe. They play it back. You're like, nope, he's out. You can't hang on the, oh, he's still safe. The video proves he's out. Get where I'm going with it? The market's telling you, I am not weak anymore. So stop. Stop thinking I am. Okay, but people marry their bias. And what happens is they continue to trade in that direction all day. Right? So here's another example. JP Morgan yesterday gapped under or halfway into, I should say, a green bar. And then actually I take that back. It gapped under the green bar, my apologies, and under the bottoming tail, and under the bottoming tail, and under the bottoming tail. There are three bottoming tails that JP Morgan took out yesterday. In fact, this was quite a nice gap, like really nice gap. Taking out a green bar under a pivot. We haven't seen too many this good in a while, especially lately. Well, having a bearish bias here is exactly the bias you're supposed to have. It's a great gap in a market that looked bearish, in a market that's gapping down, and the stock also looks really good too. So when you see this, what it did initially is what we expected it to do. But when do we get to change our opinion? 
Well, we get to change our opinion when the market's looking lower and this stock starts to change direction in front of the market, leading the market. And another way you can do this is look at the other stocks in the same sector, right? So if you look at Wells Fargo or PNC or Goldman Sachs or Citigroup or whatever, start looking at what they're doing as well. If they're starting to do the same thing, you might realize, hmm, this stock might be changing direction and the entire sector is too. So we talked about JP Morgan Long over 110 yesterday and I said, I'm a little scared of it, I need more confirmation. Well, it bounced up, pulled back, gave you another entry, right? It bounced up, pulled back, probably gave you another entry. Maybe you should have given it more room because of the type of trade it was and it pulled back a little further and just ground higher all day. And I remember seeing a couple traders who took this yesterday and they said they stopped out at break even, which is really a trail out. You're not stopping out, right? But the point was, is it ultimately worked going higher because it showed a little strength to the market and then the market stayed strong. Now, does that mean you should have taken JP Morgan yesterday? Not necessarily, right? Later on in the day, yes, because the market had proven it wasn't going to go lower. But early in the day, the first 30 to 45 minutes of the day, while we assumed and presumed this stock would go higher, it wasn't a no-brainer because the market was still in a little bit of a precarious position, right? The market still could have pulled back. But once the market put in that higher high, that's it. Market's going higher today. So that means you have to start to have a bullish bias. Now, I'm not saying to all the people that are nervous to go, hey, go out and buy a stock that was on your short list and you really liked it as a short. I'm telling the people that if you're out there looking for a trade and you're like, wow, my whole bias today was short and everything I looked at was short, I have nothing to do. Well, you can certainly walk away and say, I have nothing to do. That's fine. But if you're still trying to make some money and you're seeing stocks doing what JP Morgan is doing, okay, then you might want to have a chance or an opportunity to go long on it, okay? Well, the question is, John, did you follow your plan? That's all that matters. There are tons of stocks. I mean, let's be fair here, John. You wouldn't raise your stop to break even if you didn't think it was advantageous to you in the, in the long run. Well, at least I wouldn't, right? You might, but I wouldn't. So I don't know if you raised your stop loss on it because your plan said to, because today you didn't, right? I mean, JKS went 1R and you didn't raise your stop loss. So I don't know why you raised your stop loss on it yesterday. Um, but it did go over an R, pulled back below break even right in here two times, and then it worked. So again, our plans are not, okay, our plans are not going to be perfect, right? There are sometimes your plan is just wonderful and everything works. And there are other times your plan, well, tags you by a penny or two here or there. That's just life, okay? And you know what, John? You guaranteed on my life you wouldn't be calling this a POS if JP Morgan broke the low of the day, would you? If this thing went 1R to the penny, on the penny, at the penny, and then broke the low of the day and stopped out, the first thing you'd be thinking of is, man, I'm glad I went to break even. So my point is, is your commentary isn't terribly objective, right? There are times it saves you and there are times it bites you. That's just life, right? So I think you probably have to adjust how you approach that. All right, let's take a look. Remember the BNTX? Same thing. Markets turned, BNTX ripped. It's a bearish gap down, but you have to change your opinion. Now, I am not saying here, okay, all right, I am not saying that there was a great entry here. I'm simply saying that despite this being a bearish gap down, I have no choice but to change my perspective and my opinion on this. I don't have a choice because the chart is speaking to me. I am not trying to give my opinion to the chart. The chart, let the chart speak back to you. The chart is telling you I'm strong. Whether you like it or not, whether you agreed with the gap or not, I'm strong, deal with it. The problem is most traders don't. They marry their bias. Guys, why am I bringing this point up? Most of you probably don't know. There was two people. Definitely one. I think there were two people in the chat room yesterday go, can we short BNTX and NVAX? Both. One person was talking about NVAX. Another person was talking about BNTX. Why would you want to short this stock? 
Sure, and you're like, well, geez, I would have been right, Jared. It went from 162 to 154. That's true. It was extended. But something this strong is not something you generally get in the habit of shorting unless it becomes climactic. It's borderline. $10 to me isn't climactic. The volume is declining, not increasing, right? You do trade size. You have to trade all environments to make it. So my point, though, is right around here, someone's like, hey, can we short this? I'm like, no. The market's continuing to look higher, and this stock is stronger than the market. You're likely going to get a shallow pullback, and then it's going to go higher. Well, it did. The second time around, it would have worked as a short idea, and then it bounced back up. Be very, very careful, right? Be very, very careful with trying to take the strongest stock you've ever seen and shorting it. It's the same goes for trying to catch a falling knife. A lot of people look at a stock and go, oh, that's extended. I'm going to go long. But that's not the reason you should be going long. The reason you should be going long is there has to be some type of bottoming tail with a massive form of ending volume. The stock is way overextended. Maybe there's a double, triple bottom retest that's put in a higher high with a higher low. There has to be reasons other than, well, it looks tired. It looks extended. It's not good enough, right? It's not good enough. So you guys remember Mo? This is, I don't know, a few months back, okay? This is a stock that gapped down, right? And Mo looked good, right? Red right here, doji bar, and then boom, this big red bar comes in, takes out 53.50. It's actually quite nice. And then out of nowhere, this big wide range green bar, $1.75, $1.70, whatever, comes back in and takes out all of this. They don't get a lot more potent than this because you're looking at this and you're saying, wow, the sellers are clearly in control because the sellers owned the first two minute bar. Then the buyers and sellers had a battle, right? There was this tug of war back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then the next day, just not next day, the next bar, sorry, the next bar just engulfed the bottoming tail and took out the low. Seller's like, well, hold my beer. And then out of nowhere, in my opinion, totally random. I would never have expected this. A huge wide range bar comes in and takes out the sellers and the red bar, the doji bar, and the first two minute bar of the day. In my opinion, totally and completely unexpected. You look at the time of the day, there's no big news report. There's no oil report. There's no natural gas report. There's no energy report. Why did it do this? I don't know, but I got to change my opinion on it. I don't know. But that bar tells me my short bias is dead now. Dead. Anything I thought about weakness on this stock is no longer valid or relevant. It's now bullish. You buy it at 54 Put your stop loss down there, perhaps 53.70, whatever it is, it rips back up, goes up to 55.50 almost. That's a dollar fifty. The point I'm getting at is this stock gave you a valid reason to change your opinion, to reverse your bias. Not all stocks will do this. And again, a stock that just grinds back up a little bit is not as potent as somebody who just rips the Band-Aid off, right? Just take it off, tear it off. The buyers are in control here. Chops around a little, why? Well, it's probably a little tired from that huge move up. Chops and then rips, and it ripped. This is a powerful wide range bar. It's a trend changing turnaround bar. Despite all of our bearishness or bearish bias to start the day on this, you're forced to confront the new reality. It's bullish now. Okay? So, those are some reasons why or how you can go against or change your bias in the market. All right? Now, I want to change gears slightly. And I want to talk about, it's a similar topic, but a little bit different. Okay? Multiple time frames and market conditions matter. All right? Watch the market in multiple time frames. Okay? Now, I, I suppose... I could have added today in here as well, but I didn't. I used mostly yesterday. So let's take a look at this. This is the cues today, right? This morning. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious. Stop. All right. So we looked at the cues this morning, and Unmall very appropriately said guys, this is a sit on hands type day. Why? 
because every 60 minute chart is really extended because the market's pushed huge. I mean, a $10 move, a three, three to 4% move from the lows of the day. From the low, it was a three or 4% move. That's a massive move. What do you expect the next day to do? Not much, right? The next day is a resting day. You ran a marathon yesterday, you're probably gonna take a break today. The markets ran a marathon yesterday, right? This is the low down here, right? 276, 277, 287, okay? Support down here that we didn't break and then just rip through resistance, rip, rip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven guys because my first bar of the day starts at 9.30. Anyway, starts at nine o'clock, sorry. Nine o'clock goes to 10 o'clock. Anyway, so this was this morning up until right before the lecture, this is the cues. Have they changed a whole lot? Not really. Sure, they're a little bit lower. They're down at like 286.30 right now. That is not much. What is this? This is what we call dog shit. Okay? This is toad in a blender, Christmas tree, whatever you want to call it. Green bar, red bar, green bar, red bar, green bar, green bar, red bar, green bar, red bar, red bar doji bar. This is garbage. You are not going to make much money in that environment unless you can find something completely, totally, and utterly on its own page, which we try to do every day. Why is it like this? It's like this because yesterday was like this. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars up. Yes, there's void to go higher, but you're so tired from yesterday's marathon, right? You're packing on the carbs today. So was this ever going to be an easy trading day? No. Not in my opinion. Unwall told you that before the market ever opened and you never took a trade today with him. Okay? So, let's have a gander at Costco. I called this trade today. Right? It was a five-minute, three-bar play. Well, I don't think that there's anything wrong with this five-minute, three-bar play. Right? Good three-bar play. It looks wide bar, narrow bar, right? But, but, but it didn't work. Why not? Why didn't this work? Everyone's looking, oh, it's a five minute three bar play. Well, I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, this 60 minute chart had something to do with it. One, two, three, four, five, six bars up. Okay? And you're not getting any market help. Right? See, there's a chance that if the market ripped higher today, that maybe Costco works. But the market's up seven bars in a row too. You see, remember that comment about the market lifts, you know, all <laughs> rising tide lifts all boats, sorry, right? 70, 80, 90% of stocks follow the market. Well, if the market's up seven 60 minute bars, almost every stock you look at today is going to be up six or seven 60 minute bars. So it doesn't matter how good the daily chart looks. The 60 is way too extended. So for me to take this, five minute, three bar play, okay, was a mistake. Now, thankfully I only lost $65 on it because I got almost all of it out above break even. I left a little bit that tagged me at the bottom, but I shouldn't have taken it. Despite the five minute looking pretty nice, there's no way I should have taken this. This is one of those you look at and go, you got caught, Jared. You got caught vacuum trading. I did. I knew the 60 was extended, but I ignored it. And I'm like, yeah, but that five minute looks so good. Costco's got some relative strength to the market. Yeah, I got to take it. Mistake. This is one I'd like to have back. Granted, I only lost 65 bucks, so who cares, right? It's not 1500 This should not have been taken. What about this? What about Cisco, right? Wide bar, narrow bar, moved up about 1R. You guys got out of this at break even with Jeff. Same same idea as Costco, right? Same concept, five minute, three bar play. But why are we taking this? Why? One, two, three, four bars up, and then it moves up another 30 cents here after an extended move. See over here, guys? Just take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six bars up. Chop, chop, pull back. One, two, three, four, five bars up. 
pull back. One, two, three bars up, gap down. What do you think is going to happen here? I mean, if history is any judge on Cisco, the last four times this has happened, it's pulled back. Today, yesterday, the day before yesterday, that's three days in a row, and then back here on June 24th. Do you see how important it is to know the environment in which you're trading? See how important it is to make sure you look at the daily and the 60? It's going to save you so much trouble later on in trading, right? The 60-minute chart, I say it frequently, is probably the single most important time frame for an intraday trader. Sure, the daily is extremely important. I look at them all, so it doesn't matter. But if I had to choose, I'd look at the 60 over the daily. But I look at them both. You just can't be taking this kind of stuff. And you guys got out of break even. And thankfully for me, I got out of break even on Costco. We were never going to have a great trading day today. It wasn't going to happen. Sure, guys, someone out there did. That's always the case. You can take a half, short, a half court shot in basketball and drain it. But there's a reason you don't make a living taking half court shots in basketball. Because it's a low percentage shot. There are people today that made money with the market being up seven bars in a row, and they maybe made money going long. I'm totally happy with for those people. But you're not going to make a living doing that because the market's going to do pretty much what it did today every time. Pretty much what it did today every time. So be smart with your market bias in the morning and know when it's okay to reverse a trade, whether it's a mega gap, a climactic, a turnaround bar, or unusually great relative strength. But when you see a day like today, and it also happens to be FOMC minutes today, <laughs> puts another kink in the works. Even though it's not as big as their decision, you still get the minutes. And reading some of those minutes could have a you know an impact on the market. Today's a sit-on-hands day. Today's a day that, like Unmol said, Jared, don't bother. Just go back to bed. He was right. He was right. Okay? So we need to be more cognizant of the environment in which we're trading especially when it's an obvious one. We don't always, they're not always this obvious, right? But when it's an obvious one, we really need to be much more careful with our approach. See, I don't mind, guys, when you're in a really good market environment, you take a good trade and the market looks like it should go higher and then something happens and it doesn't. That's just called, oh, well, right? Shit happens. There's nothing you can do about that. You followed your plan, your checklist, you lined up all your ducks, but it just didn't work out. This, this is not that. This is different. This is when you come in and you're drinking the hopium, like I did on Costco today. I drank the hopium, thinking, well, it is a nice pattern. You know, the market is a little bit strong and it's stronger than the market. You know, this should work. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't work. It shouldn't. The market's not going to help you. It's extended. The stock's extended. It's not going to work. I said it earlier and I'll end with this. Today, I guarantee you, some people in the chat room and elsewhere lost three, four, five to one, five are today, and they will now spend the next week, you heard me, week, four or five days getting that back to break even. You just wasted a week of your month. Now, it's different when you come in and take three great trades and they don't work because it does happen from time to time. It's not the same thing when you come in and take three trades you shouldn't have taken and lose three R. It's not the same thing. Okay? One of them was avoidable. One of them was not. Today's was absolutely avoidable. All right? So I'm reviewing this because I'm being objective about how I traded today. Right? Thankfully, I didn't lose much money today. But when I look back on what I traded, I should not have. The patterns in a vacuum were solid, but they weren't good in the bigger picture. And we always trade in the bigger picture. I always use the forest analogy. You're caught up in the leaves and the branches, the bark. Take a look at the forest once in a while. It might be on fire and you don't even know it. And it's coming for you and you just don't know it because you didn't look. Right? So with that, I hope you guys learned a little bit about when you can reverse your trades, how important market information on the 60 minute chart is and how that 60 minute chart relates to your own individual trades okay and hopefully that will help keep you out of trouble as well as take advantage of environments that you might think you're not able to take advantage of by 
reversing a trade when the market tells you that it's done going lower. All right. So I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.